Hey guys, Lieutenant Media with another Anki related video guide. Over the past few years, devices with touchscreens and with high resolution displays have become the norm both in lecture halls and homes alike. But unfortunately, Anki precedes that trend. It comes from an era where notebooks were still notebooks and tablets were still tablets. And so its user phase isn't really that well adapted to the use on these types of devices. Fortunately, there are a few options that you can employ in order to make the experience more enjoyable. Specifically, there are a number of add-ons that you can install and also a number of apps that are also inside the Anki ecosystem that provide a better experience on touchscreens. Now, as far as the add-ons are concerned, I want to present you with two different categories of add-ons. The first three ones I want to showcase are the zooming add-on, the force custom font extended add-on, and the again good huge extra buttons add-on. And all of these three fall under the same category of modifying the user interface scaling so that it becomes much easier to click on different items and so that they are presented more sharper on displays with higher resolution. The second category of add-ons, which there is only one of, is the touch mode add-on. Uh, this one adds a number of gestures to your interface in Anki. If you've used Anki Mobile or Anki Droid before, then you will be familiar with these gestures. They make reviewing your cards a breeze. Now, as far as apps are concerned and solutions that you can install outside of Anki 2.0, the first is the so-called Anki Universal app. This is an app developed by a different a group of developers on Anki itself, but it's also part of the Anki ecosystem. So it's compatible both with Anki's file format and with its synchronization protocol, and it provides a more streamlined experience on tablet devices. And the other thing I want to demonstrate are a number of additions that you are to expect in the next release of Anki, Anki 2.1. This has been in development for over a year now. It's currently in its beta testing period, and it should come out somewhere around the end of this year or the start of next year. There are a number of modifications here and adjustments that should also make the use of Anki uh, more adapted to these types of devices. And I want to showcase these in this video. Now let's start off with the add-ons that I wanted to demonstrate. Now the first one, the zooming add-on you will already be familiar with. If you've watched the previous videos on this channel, I actually dedicated an entire episode just on zooming into your cards and into your images on your cards, which is this one right here. But as far as the major or the, the basic use of this add-on is concerned, it works in the same way as the zoom capabilities in your web browser. So you can use control plus the scroll wheel to set the zoom setting. And these settings can be set individually both for the um, overview screen here, the deck screen, and also for the reviewer itself. And the great thing about this add-on is that all of these different screens and the different magnification settings are preserved across uh, restarting Anki. So if I go back to the overview and increase it even further and then restart Anki, you should see that this setting is preserved. So you can use this to persistently set a higher magnification for the content on your screen. And that is quite important, especially if you if you're using a, a screen with a high resolution on it, with a high DPI. Okay, so that's as far as this add-on is concerned. Now, as you saw, the zooming add-on only allows us to modify the scaling of the main reviewer, or rather of the main uh, central interface of Anki. But of course, these elements down here, the buttons here, for instance, or the toolbar, are also difficult, very difficult to um, control if you try to do it with your um, fingers on a touchscreen device. And you can also adjust these by using the second add-on that I want to demonstrate, which is the Force Custom Font Extended Add-on. I will quickly install it just to showcase how this process usually works. You have to go into the Browse and Install window, then add your add-on code, click on OK, restart Anki, and as usual, the add-on should now, should then apply its changes. So as you can see, it already modified the different font sizes of um, my Anki window. And that's because I used this add-on before, so it already had a configuration set up. But by default, if you install the add-on, it does not change the font sizes on its own, but rather you have to use the tools entries, which are found under the menu right here, under the tools menu, specifically these two here, to change the general font and the menu font. The general font refers to the font of the central interface of Anki, so the reviewer that you can also modify with the zooming add-on, but it also refers to these um, links up here and also the reviewer buttons. So let's go ahead and change this font size. It already is set to a pretty high setting, but let's uh, change this even further. Let's set it to 20. And as you can see, you can not only adjust the font size, but also its uh, font type 
and also the style. Let's go with a regular font here. And as you see, the font size has changed. It's even huger now. And this add-on also works with the zooming add-on. So if you want to zoom out of this, you can also use the controls we discussed before. And as you saw, it didn't just, just change the main reviewer area. It also changed the buttons up here and also the buttons down here. Now, if you want to modify the menus or also the sidebar of the browser, then you will have to use the uh, second entry that this add-on adds, and that is the change menu font entry. Now, let's go ahead and set this to uh, 24 and make it even larger than it already is. And we see now that the menu entries are much larger as we expect. And the same thing also goes for the browser. Of course, if you set this too large, to be too large, then these elements will be very difficult to read. But generally speaking, as you can see in this screen, uh, this small adjustment already makes it much easier to control this interface using your fingers. It should be much easier to press on these entries. So uh, this add-on is probably one of the most important add-ons if you want to use Anki 2.0 on a um, touchscreen device or high resolution device. Okay, let's move on to the next add-on, which is the, again, good, huge extra buttons add-on. Before I install this, let me just quickly uninstall the font adjustment add-on, simply so that you know exactly which changes are performed by which add-on specifically. Okay, so let's go ahead and install this one then. And um, as you will see soon, uh, this is not just an adjustment to the reviewer buttons, but it rather is an add-on compilation that consists of a lot of different features that extend both Anki's review answer button area, but also a lot of different other aspects about Anki itself. Okay, so the main feature, the headlining feature about this add-on is its modifications to the review area. Now, as you can see, the show answer button is much, much larger with this add-on installed. And as you can see, it also comes with a number of additional controls that are usually not present in Anki, which is this later not now button. You might be familiar with this from my last video, the uh, answer buttons adjustment video. In this, I demonstrated how this can be used as an alternate to the Bori function. It's a great feature, and if you want to learn more about more about it, make sure to check out my last video. Now, aside from the buttons up here, if we reveal the answer, we'll see that it also changes the sizes of the different rating buttons, and we also see that it colors them in some very really nicely parsable colors that are similar to the ones found in Anki Droid. Outside of that, it also adds a number of additional review buttons. These are the same ones found in the more answer button buttons for all cards add-on that I presented in the last episode. So all in all, this add-on comes with a lot of different features. It doesn't just adjust the size of the buttons as its name might imply. And it also comes with, with some features I did not demonstrate right here um, before. Um, you will just have to read through the description to learn exactly wh what it uh, changes. There are a number of different things. Some of these things don't have to do directly with the answer button area, which might be an issue. Um, if there are some features here that you do not want to have um, available in Anki, then it's an issue because they all come bundled with this add-on. So there is no way to just install um, the modifications to the review area. It's rather an add-on bundle that consists of a lot of different features that all come together as one single unit. And of course, with add-ons like these that modify a lot of different areas of Anki, then it becomes much more likely that they might interfere with other add-ons and might lead to other issues. So for that reason, my recommendation with this add-on is to just give it a try, see if there are any side effects with other add-ons, and if there aren't, then this really is one of the best ways you can use the answer button area on a touchscreen device. Okay, so that's as far as the different add-ons are concerned that adjust the um, the user interface scaling. And let's move on to something more exciting, which is the tools, uh, which is the touchscreen mode um, add-on, which is already installed in this Anki version. Okay, so let's demonstrate what this does. The first thing it does is that it adds a gesture to reveal the answer. Instead of having to click on the answer button, you can simply click on the answer area or on the review area, and that will directly show you the answer to that question. The other thing this does is that it adds a number of swiping gestures that will allow you to apply different ratings to your cards. Specifically, you can swipe left to rate the card as again. You can swipe right to rate the card as good. You can swipe the card down to rate it as easy, and you can swipe uh, up on your screen to rate it as hard 
which in this case is not available in this uh, and on this card so it doesn't work but uh, with cards that do have a hard setting swiping up will then make them go or make them be rated with the hard option so that's as far as the uh, different gestures for rating cards are concerned one last thing that this add-on does it also adds a gesture to scroll through your decks so if you have a lot of decks on the screen and screen and don't want to use this small scroll bar to the right you can just uh, swipe up and down next to the um, deck area to just scroll through it okay so that's as far as that error is concerned it's i think it's not that well known which is a shame because it really is very useful if you have a touchscreen device so give it a try guys if you have a tablet again rate it if you'd like i think the add-on author will definitely be happy about that all right, so let's go over to the app solutions, which will um, make up the second part of this video. Okay, so let's start with Anki Universal. This is something I will not be able to present uh, on this machine, or at least not in this session, because it's something that's limited to Windows. So this is one limitation you have to know. Anki Universal only works on Windows PCs and specifically on Windows 10 PCs. In one of my future videos, I might dedicate an entire episode to this app just to demonstrate how to use it and how it works exactly. So, what is Anki Universal? Well, it's a app specifically designed to work on Windows 10 devices, as I said, and as a universal app, it works both on smartphones, on PCs, and on tablets. So, it really is very flexible. It works on all of these types of different interfaces. And um, the main selling point of Anki Universal is that it is designed from the ground up to work well with the touchscreen. So as you can see from these screenshots, it has a very easily uh, usable um, interface. It should be very easy to select different decks, etc. So it really is a fantastic way to review your cards if you are using a tablet device. And even more importantly, it also comes with some power user features, which you might not find in Anki Droid, for instance. So um, for instance, Anki Droid's field editor isn't really that advanced. It doesn't allow you to set different formatting options like bold, italics, etc. But as you can see, this app does. So even though it is not a replacement for Anki Desktop, it still comes with more features than the normal mobile apps that you would find on Apple or on iOS and Android. So there are a few limitations I want to point out about this um, app. The first one, I already said, it's only compatible with Windows 10. The second one, which is more important right now, is that it only supports synchronizing um, regular cards without their media files. So it will only synchronize um, the text content of your cards to Anki Web. If you use a lot of media files like images or audio, then this app would probably not be a good choice right now. But this is this is bound to change. Um, from what I understand, the developers are working on this um, functionality and it should be available in a few months. The other limitation I want to highlight, which of course I have to highlight as the, this channel really focuses on add-ons, um, Anki Universal does not support Anki add-ons. Like Anki Mobile or Anki Droid, um, there is no add-on support implemented. And even if at some point this app does implement add-on support, it will never reach the likes of Anki itself. The thing about Anki's add-on system, and which really makes it something very special compared to things like Chrome extensions or Firefox plugins, for instance, is that add-ons have an incredibly um, amount, incredible amount of power to modify Anki's interface. They can pretty much exchange or modify anything within Anki. You could write an add-on that completely replaces Anki with another app, for instance, and that is not possible with normal extensions for Chrome or Firefox. So that flexibility and that amount of features that add-ons can provide will never be available for this app. So for that reason, as far as Anki Universal is concerned, my recommendation here is use this if you just want to review your cards quickly, if you just have a very simple use case, but for anything more advanced, if you want to have things like image occlusion available, close overlap, or awesome TTS, all of these fantastic add-ons that are out there for Anki, then use the Anki Desktop app. I would regard this as a companion piece to Anki Desktop, not as a standalone drop-in solution and replacement for normal Anki. And um, with that said, let's go over to Anki itself, because as much as I've said so far that Anki is not really fit for touchscreen use, 
there are some developments over the past few uh, months and weeks which should change at least some of that and that is the advent of Anki 2.1. So what is Anki 2.1? It's a point release so you'd expect that it doesn't really change that much from Anki 2.0 but the thing with 2.1 is that it really changes a lot of things behind the scenes. It, for instance, it uses a completely different Python um, programming version. Um, programming language version. So Anki 2.0 is pr um, programmed in Python 2 and this one is in Python 3. Of course, as an end user, this might not, might not really um, tell you that much. But uh, what I want to say with this is that um, the back end really has changed a lot. The uh, different libraries that the, un the add-on that the um, app uses, the different widget libraries, etc. All of that has changed and has improved and has been updated to uh, be more fit for today's world of different tablet devices and high resolution screens etc. So for instance one of the main selling points of Anki 2.1 is that it scales its user interface much more elegantly and much more um, efficiently. So I can't demonstrate this on this device because it's just um, a small uh, small resolution screen but if you give Anki 2.1 a try on your high resolution tablet or something like that you'll see that all of these inter interface elements look very crisp, they look um, well formatted and they all have the right size that, so that they should be easy enough to interact with and click on. So that's the main and most important selling point of Anki 2.1. But I, outside of that, there are also another a, lump, a number of other different changes and advantages of this uh, version of Anki, which I hope I will be demonstrating in one of the future um, episode episodes. But as far as um, the touchscreen support is concerned, and as far as the high resolution screen support is concerned, the main change here is that Anki 2.1 scales much better on these types of screens. Now, as far as whether you should use it or not, well, it's very early right now. It's still, Anki 2.1 is still in beta right now. It's still being tested extensively. And while it has become much more stable than it was before, it still is a testing version. So my recommendation here is to only use it if you are familiar with beta testing, if you would like to help out with the development of the app. And um, outside of that, I would say you should probably stay away from it for now. One of the other reasons outside of the fact that it is in beta for staying away from it is that um, it doesn't support as many add-ons. Uh, the thing is that Anki 2.1, um, because of these changes I said before, because of these different adjustments to its um, libraries and toolkits, etc., most add-ons will have to be rewritten for 2.1. And as there are about 420 different add-ons out there, you might imagine that this will take quite a while. I've already converted some of my add-ons, but I can tell you that it's not an easy process, especially if the add-ons are more complex. So you can expect this process to take quite a while. If um, I would probably expect um, Anki 2.1 to be released at the end of 2017 or beginning of 2018. And um, I would then expect it to take at least a few months, at maybe even a year for add-on support to be up to par with what is out there for Anki 2.0 right now. So my recommendation for the time being right now, only use it if you want to test and want, want to help with the uh, development of, we, of the app. As far as the future is concerned, as far as the stable release is concerned, once it comes out, Make sure to check which add-ons are compatible with 2.1. Uh, see if these add-ons are th something that you depend on on your workflow and then decide whether you want to use 2.1 or not, depending on that. The great thing is that 2.1 and 2.0 will be supported for a while. They will work in parallel. Um, I've spoken with Damien Elmas, who is the author of Anki, and um, as according to him, at least for a while, the, there will be no breaking changes which should make the, which would make the two apps, or two app versions incompatible with each other. So you will have, there will be a grace period where you can use both of these versions of Anki in parallel. And then at some point, probably Anki 2.1 will be the only one you can use with Anki Wack, for instance. But until then, there's still some time left. So don't worry. Um, you can still use all of the add-ons and all of your configurations as you're familiar with right now. All right, guys, I think that's as far as this episode of the uh, of the Anki tutorial is concerned. I hope you enjoyed this quick overview of different options um, to modify Anki and make it more fit for touchscreen use. To give you a quick summary, Anki 2.0 was designed in a period of time where these types of devices weren't really common, and so its user interface scaling and controls aren't really adjusted to that. And Fortunately, though, there are a number of add-ons that you can use in order to make this experience a bit more enjoyable and a bit more well-adjusted. 
But outside of that, there are also other solutions by either installing a third party app like Anki Universal or by switching to Anki 2.1 once it eventually comes out. Thanks again guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to stay tuned to this channel. Make sure, sure to subscribe. There will be a lot of different add-ons, uh, different videos coming out, um, both on add-ons, but also on Anki use in general like this one. Until the next episode, good luck with your studies guys and I hope to see you soon. Bye.